Well hey guys, thanks for checking out this video. I'm going to be showing 5 must play games for the Sega Mega Drive. Now this was the go to console in the 90s when the 16 bit battle of consoles was happening. Now I recently came across a lot of catalogue that I've never actually seen before. So here's just 5 titles I do recommend playing. So hit that like, hit that subscribe and let's get into 5 must play games. Battlemania Daijinjo was developed by Vic Tokai that manufactured an array of games for a variety of arcades, consoles and PC. This was released back in 1993 and serves as a sequel to the original Battlemania which was released in North America under the title of Trouble Shooter. A horizontal slash side scrolling with some vertical added to it shoot em up. Some great animation and character design that really matches this awesome soundtrack. You can tell they had a lot of freedom creating this title as it really brings out the fun factor. It never got a western release but you can grab a fan translation. Chris Rasa from Hardcore Gaming 101 described the game as one of the best shooters available on the Sega Mega Drive and I could totally agree. I only recently came across this gem, I thought I would give it just a little 5 minute test because of his brilliant front cover art, but I couldn't actually put this game down. The controllers are very fluid and enjoyable. The second character that you see on this game is controlled by just pressing the C button and this makes the character switch to a different side. As well as selecting different power-ups before each level, it can get really fun using them differently to your own advantage. It really stands up in the shmup genre, incorporating multiple elements from other shooters. On the settings menu, you can also adjust how many directions you like a character to shoot as it was compensating for the controllers prior to the generation of the consoles of the Mega Drive to adjust players that were still weren't up to date with 8 directions. Now that really brings me back. Battlemania Daijinjo, which I'm sure is how it's pronounced right, had a very limited print run making it very difficult to find out in the wild in a complete condition. It is now one of the most expensive Sega Mega Drive games today. I recommend finding another way to play this game. If you own this original, well done, and if I had a hat on, I would take it off you, sir. Back when there were very few people here in the UK with a Super Nintendo, and they would always go on about this Zelda Link to the Past, but here our answer to that was Crusader of Senti. Never liked the PAL cover, but there, that's better. The Japanese cover really helps instead of just confusing us with the PAL one. It was released back in 1994 in Japan and developed by Nextex, exclusive to the Mega Drive. The story starts in Solai Town. The game's hero has just turned 14 at the beginning of the game. A law requires that all 14 year old boys go to train and prepare for battle. The hero received the sword and shield of his father who died in the battle and the great reputation from his bravery in defending the city. The hero finds himself losing the ability to speak to fellow humans and instead gaining the ability to speak to animals. Some of them will join you lending the heroes their abilities while they are equipped. Each animal has its own special technique. The very first one for example can hold down enemies whilst the hero can attack. There are a total of 16 animals that can, you can tame through the entire game. I found the game to have some great visuals, some pretty good music and some simple gameplay mechanics. The story is divided into two parts. The hero must first take time to discover his own world and unlock various levels. You can then access them as much as you like. During the first half of the game, the hero won't be able to speak to humans but only to animals and plants. Only after defeating a certain dragon boss you can then speak to humans and encounter the second half of the game. I found this title more targeted to the younger audience. It has some great ratings making it a true rival to that of Zelda, The Link Awakening. Also if you're in luck you may actually come across this guy sipping on some gin and juice. Now that's some awesome intro music right there. I do really enjoy my shooting ups if you can't tell already 
and a 16-bit era it was a sucker for shooting ups and that is one of the main reasons why I really enjoy this generation of gaming. Elemental Master was released in Japan in 1990 by Technosoft, the guys who are also behind the magic of the Thunder 4 series. It took almost three years in 1993 to actually get this to a Western audience, but sadly, again, there were no power release. I found this title just tracking down some shooting up games for the Mega Drive, and again, with this game, the music is just absolutely brilliant and really captivating that really totally supports the quality of the game. The game is an auto scrolling upward shooter. The player can choose to either shoot up or down by just selecting different buttons, collecting power ups on the way. After defeating the very first level, this fairy person thing joins you, but unlocks a special power to the elemental weapon that you have equipped. Each level you beat unlocks another elemental weapon. With each boss, it has a weakness and a certain method to defeat it. It's a simple, solid game with some banging music that you'll find quickly returning back to. Mazen Saga Mutant Fighter released in 1993. The PAL cover actually held up pretty well this time, which is pretty rare because the Japanese ones are pretty awesome. This is a hybrid beat em up fighting video game developed by Almanic Corporation and co developed with artists behind the original manga and supported with the same members who were behind the awesome Evo Search for Eden for the Super Nintendo. The company released a handful of games for multiple systems. They issued a closer just in 1997, which is just five years after the release of this game. The game is a combination of Nagai's Mazinga and Devil Man's franchise. You play as Koji Kobuto, welder of the Mazina Z armor, and fights against the powerful bio beast led by the god Kaiser Hell. The game runs and looks like most beat em ups that you have come across, but it features smaller main character sprites and enemies that give more room for the stage layout. The animation I find is pretty awesome and quite different. The music fits really well, but is not the best throughout the game. During the boss segment of the game, the gameplay actually takes an interest in change to a fighting style gameplay, adding a unique factor to this release. The game does come with a few challenges and it has had some mixed reviews, but at the time, a few reviews were comparing it to the likes of Street of Rage, as it was released around the same time, but I'm sure I don't think even today any beat em up can compare to that awesome creation. But the game was mostly praised with a very high score. It's a shame we actually didn't get a sequel to this. It's definitely worthy of a must play. On to my last one for you guys, Fancy Star 4 was a renowned by many YouTubers as one of the greatest RPGs ever made. Personally, my experience with this series started off with Fancy Star Online for the Dreamcast and what a great experience that was, being one of the first RPG online games for a home console. But I'll stop right there before I can and this comes out to be a very long video. I remember seeing the first one in the series for the Master System in the early mid 90s and that still had a very high price, especially for this time. It was first released in 1987, competing alongside other role playing games like Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest, which managed to take most of the spotlight for RPG gamers, especially overseas. Originally the games were packed on a cartridge with very high memory which really drove the price up, the first one having the most memory on any cartridge in the market at that time. The games still sustained their price even till today, so that never really helped gamers to get really into this series or give it a shot. Now the games could be accessed on almost any console or handheld and from the hype of watching other YouTubers playing this game I decided to jump into the Fantasy Star series for the Mega Drive. Fantasy Star 4 is considered the best in the series and is the last one based in the Algol Star System and what a great way to round this series up. But for me and a lot of players, a fifth in the series in additional story driven style will never go amiss. This series is the flagship for Sega and it never got the appreciation originally and support it should have for the Mega Drive, mostly due to its price tag. With this game now available to us on almost any console or any handheld system, I think it's a great time to actually jump into the Fantasy Star series that was originally released. 
So Sega's Mega Drive console is an awesome console to look into when you're trying to find some hidden gems, especially when you look to the overseas, especially in the USA and Japan. And the community behind translating these ROMs from Japan has been awesome and they've been around for years. Now they are just five of my recommendations. There's a lot more games I'd love to cover, but I've only got time for five at the moment. And I'd love to hear from you guys, what games do you recommend for me to play and for the rest of the viewers? So as always, if you like this video, hit that button. If you want to help and support the channel, click subscribe, leave your comments below, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thank <laughs> you.